Hey guys, we're talking about the three credit bureaus that are responsible for reporting your credit scores on a monthly basis. There's three of them. There's Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. These are three different agencies that are just reviewing all the positive and the good stuff um, of your credit report almost on a weekly basis, right? And they're obviously contracted and they're signed up with different monitoring services such as Smart Credit, Credit Karma, and all these other wonderful websites that are out there that give you the ability to monitor your credit. Okay, so what happens is that th many times um, a lot of people are a little bit uh, trying, they're trying to figure out exactly why there's never a consistent reporting of the credit scores, right? Um, and a lot of that reason is that these three credit bureaus, they retrieve a lot of their information from what the creditors and collection companies are reporting to them. And it's not often that some of these companies are reporting on a consistent basis. So collection agencies or creditors might report to Equifax and Experian and some of them may not report to TransUnion or vice versa, right? And so what happens is that that creates a fluctuation on credit scores because not all three are consistently reporting to all three credit bureaus and that's why you have a variation of credit scores. Now, um, a lot of times, you know, when you use something like Credit Karma, you're going to see TransUnion and you're going to see Equifax, but you're not going to see Experian. Now, I'm sure they have some kind of behind the seats agreement uh, with both uh, w between Credit Karma, TransUnion and Equifax, but not Experian. Right. So. Um, so that's an important thing to know as to why there's a fluctuation in credit scores. Um, in addition to that, you know, a lot of these credit monitoring services, they use a different type of algorithm in the dictating what your credit scores are. And so many times a lot of us know that the credit score that they're looking at may not always reflect the type of score that they're looking for should they be looking to purchase a home, um, an auto loan, you know, and things of that nature. Okay. And that's where the different score models come in play when it comes to trying to dictate what your scores are so that you know whether you should proceed in making that big purchase. Uh, these two scoring models, they're called Vantage Scoring and FICO Scoring. And for now, we're not going to go too much in depth about that, but I did want to just explain to you exactly these two scoring models and explain to you exactly why there is a fluctuation in different scores on a monthly basis by all these three credit bureaus. Okay, because they're constantly trying to measure the positive behavior and the negative behavior. OK, now when it comes to the credit repair process, the way these three credit bureaus work is that they're going to allow you to either dispute online or dispute by mail. Um, in some cases, you can even dispute by fax. But from my understanding is that that's even being limited these days as well. Now, one of the big things that you don't want to do uh, is dispute online. And the reason why you don't want to dispute online and the reason why they make it so easy for us to dispute online is because it actually removes some of your rights that you're not aware of for doing so. And it all it takes is one time for you to dispute online and then you're removing some of your rights. OK, so we always recommend and suggest that you do it by mail. OK, and obviously you want to certify something so that you can acknowledge when they received it because they are on a deadline to have to respond to you by a specific time frame. All right. So this is how the credit repair process works, is that uh, we look for the items that um, that have to be that are being disputed. The letters are printed out. We put them in the mail and we send them out when you mail them out to the credit bureaus they'll receive it, okay? And when they receive it, which these days during COVID-19, there's a little bit of delay with the mailing system, so it's already taken a little bit longer for them to receive it to begin with. But when they do receive it, they start working on that dispute letter, okay? And depending if they're behind or not, what they'll do is they'll receive it, 
they are open up the mail, the envelope, take the letter out, and they may scan, the, the person that's actually removing it from the piece of mail may look at it and they will try to find reasons as to what the dispute is and is it legible, is it doable, is it uh, is somebody abusing the system by disputing 20 accounts when they should only be disputing anywhere from three to five, okay? Uh, sometimes people can be disputing your name, your address, maybe a social security number that really doesn't belong to you. And so they'll see if you have sufficient amount of evidence to justify removing that address or removing the name that is not you, okay? And if you don't have it, they'll send you a letter and they won't proceed with the dispute, okay? And they're going to send you a letter saying that the dispute and the, the supporting documentation you provided is not sufficient. When it comes to the actual disputing of the accounts, if they see any reason for them to create another delay, they will. That's their job. They want to make it as hard as they can for you so that you become impatient, you forget about it, and you keep going with life, and that specific item stays on your credit report. Okay? So please know that being specific, being consistent and persistent <clears throat> is super important. Now, if a dispute letter is good and you uh, everything's done perfectly with the letter, what they'll do is they'll grab the letter and they'll stick it into a machine. And this machine is called eOscar. And what eOscar is designed to do, it's designed to scan every item on that letter. And it finds the, what you're disputing, the reason, and what you want done. Okay? And so what happens is that because there's, they get thousands and thousands of letters, these three credit bureaus are very dependent, not on people, but on this software to actually process these letters to notify the collection agencies, the creditors, about the dispute that's taking place. And then they have a certain amount of time to respond to it because if they don't respond to the bureaus, then that's when there is, is a reason for them to actually delete the account. Okay? Or to delete, yeah, to delete the account. So now depending on your reason of what you use as to uh, why they should delete it, the creditors and collection agencies, they can always go back to the file and confirm it and verify it even after that account's been deleted and they can slap it back on your credit report, okay? And so it's very important to understand the right reasons of what you're using on your letters and the verbiage of that letter has to be very specific so that these accounts stay permanently off your credit report, okay? So the idea here is this, is that when you, if you are someone that's doing self work on the credit repair stuff, um, you want to make sure that whatever it is you're disputing, it's legible, it's accurate, and you're preparing all the details of this process to be on point because you don't want to give the human person receiving that piece of mail, you don't want to give them any reason of why they should spit it back to you and not proceed with the dispute. Secondly, if you understand some of the tips and tricks to confuse the eOscar system, that's a good thing because if you can confuse the system, you put, you're telling the system, you're telling the process that they need to put it back into the human person that received that letter and they have to process the letter manually. And when you do things manually and you're doing them in bunches, that creates reasons of why there could be mistakes and things don't get processed. Therefore, you end up on the winning side of everything where the items get deleted. Okay? So, um, understand that process with the credit bureaus is that there's never a level of consistency. Uh, there's always a lot of human error. Uh, your credit report has a lot of mistakes, um, things that you may be aware or not aware of. Um, whether they're valid or not valid, whether they are within the, the statutory laws or not, there's always a lot of errors and this is part of the repair process is to remove some of those errors, get things cleaned up and get them up to date to what they're supposed to be uh, and hopefully your credit scores also receive um, a little bit of a little bit of love with it going up 
uh, by you actually fixing some of this stuff. So uh, I hope you guys learned something about the three credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. If you have any questions, please let us know. Put your comments below. And uh, we appreciate any support and love we can get because we are just starting out. And um, if there's anything you want us to talk about, let us know. Thank you.